Welcome to the top five sports callers of the week. Number five. Joe from New York joined Mike Francesa to discuss Tiger Woods' struggles. A lot of talk about Tiger Woods today. Where's that talk? Was, Where was the talk about Tiger Woods? If you look, I'm not sure what it is, but if you look at the Jack Nicholas, he must have won seven, eight of those majors, probably more, conservatively, coming from behind on Sunday. You want a lot of them coming Tiger, from behind. Tiger's never Tiger won coming look, from Yeah. But that, wait, 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 so what do you draw from that? I draw from that when things aren't going good. He's not he, he's not mentally tough anymore. He, especially when you get... Well, in, in his guys, prime, he had never come from behind to win. In, in his greatest days, 2000, he had never come from behind to win a major. Right, but he's the one that still thinks he can go out there and, and play. I'm well, not so, saying and maybe he can. He can. And we'll find out if he can. But, but guys like Nicholas and, and Johnny Miller in, in 1971. Don't compare Johnny Miller to Tiger Woods. It's for silly. Number four. King from Turlock hopped on with Grant Napier to give his views on court storming in college basketball. Hey, listen, I, I agree with you. It's got to stop. They, I, I don't know that you can say nobody can go on the court because I think a lot of times after a game you have pictures with family members and Oh, media or a special guest, and the, you know, there's something. There's yeah. Some people are obviously going to be on the. Yeah, court. but that that's different. That's a completely controlled environment where they go to a certain section after the game, right. and after right. the court is cleared, they're escorted on by security to take the pictures. That's completely different. Yeah, you you, you can't just say nobody. You get these people can go on, but then the kids in a college will say, "Hey, those people are on. I'm going down." No, they're not. No, no, no. You're wrong. You're you're absolutely wrong. Number three, Trent calling from his car in Chicago, hopped on with Boers and Bernstein, and he had some thoughts as well on court storming and the guy's idea for punishment. Um, I got a quick question for you guys. I heard you guys kind of talking a little bit about all this storming the court madness. Um, you guys threw out the idea there about giving college students possible felonies for yes. doing this. Yes. I, I kind of think... You guys need to break that down a little bit more on, on what you're doing to the future of young children. I'll what? call them adults, I guess. Um, young children? They're you're in saying, their, what? You're, you're saying giving college students a felony for storming a court. Yeah, hey, make, a, make a, it a felony a, and it stops. Make it a felony and it stops, yeah. Right. You really think it's going to stop that simple? It better. Yes. Well, if they, don't, if they want to stay out of jail. Yeah. I mean, you're talking about potentially ruining lives of people. No. For, no. You're talking no, about ruining no, your own lives. No. Life. They, you're talking about They're them making it. the choice to yeah, do it. Yeah, they make the choice. Not all college students are making really awesome choices in Well, school. they bet, mean, You know what? I can't say that I did. I mean, I... I if I you know some... If you are... Ruined. If you are told... A, it's not like they're going to spring it on them after the fact... They say, "Oh, wait a second! You ran out of the court. Now all of a sudden, you got a no, felony you on your know record." It beforehand. No, you, 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 you make it. You first... make it very, very clear that this is now a felony. Don't do it. Who goes around and tells all these possible drunken students? Oh Who my goes around God. and tells them? Number two. Boomer and Carton show got a little weird when Howard from Farmingville called about Babe Ruth's apparent PED of choice. Yeah, according to the Warp Records book by Bruce Nash. Yeah, of course, we know um, Bruce Good. Oh, yeah, Babe good Bruce dude, good dude. injected himself with an extract from sheep testicles. And one, one day, it was out ill and the Yankees covered it up saying it was a failure. So they, there were years when they Bruce did more home runs than entire teams. So you wonder how they really did that. Number one. Lynn from Maine joined Felger and Maserati to discuss the new pace of play rules in Major League Baseball. When I moved to Boston at age 15 in 1946, every Sunday we went to a doubleheader, either at Fenway Park or if the Braves were, were home, we went over to Braves Field. And if we could see a doubleheader, take a break of 15 minutes between the two games, and leave Ashmont about 11 o'clock in the morning and get home by 6 o'clock at night on most Sundays. So the horse and buggy would get you back in that time? <laughs> no. I'm sorry, Wayne. I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm joking. Mind. I was joking about that. <laughs> but uh, things have changed, and they got to do something about it. No question, Wayne. Thank you so much for the call. My father tells the same story, except he throws in that he had time to take a crap, too. <laughs> Tune in every week to hear the wildest callers and the wittiest banter as CBS Local Sports brings you the top five sports callers of the week.